Hi, this is Raymond Better Tattooing. Uh, coming back with more videos. It feels weird doing this again. It's been a while. Uh, I was sick for a long time. I had a stroke, and now I'm working again. So we're going to start making videos. Hopefully these aren't really awkward and weird. <laughs> Anyways, uh, today we're going to talk about the elusive box motion for Phil. All right. <laughs> Okay, now that that's over with, <clears throat> we're actually, um, people have asked me this like I don't know how many times, and it's kind of funny because, like, I don't know if we ever triage in our brain what we're doing when we're doing it, we're doing tattooing, I think more often than not we're just like kind of empathizing our way through tattoos, where we're just like, I'm doing this and it looks like this, therefore it's right, but not really paying attention that there's a specific way you can mimic those things rather than just trying to go for a vibe or a feel, right? I'm sorry, I gotta drink tea. It's cold out today, which usually is why I wanna start doing these. I hate doing the videos in the summer because it's like 100 and something degrees. It's like 45 Celsius in this place. I can't handle it. So um, anyways, let's get into this. So there is like four main hand motions that you can use for filling a tattoo, right? Uh, like the first one <clears throat> is our hatch motion, right? Where we just, have lines that are intersecting, crossing back and forth, and it creates a fill, right? Uh, number two is a pendulum. And that's where we take our, our machine, whatever we're using it, and we dip it back and forth, kind of like a magic wand going over the skin, right? The third one is our shovel, and that's where we're doing our basically drags in almost like a shovel motion. Looks like a very slow whip shade. And the last one we've gotten to is the box. Now the reason why I'm saying all of these to lead with is because each one of them has a different result when it heals, especially down the road. We should probably talk about that when we get into it. And these are <clears throat> in levels of like how much trauma that you're putting into the skin and how much fill it gets. This is kind of the order and like how well it's going to heal out looking fully saturated, right? The hatches that have the biggest problem that they get these, these chronic spots of oversaturation wherever those lines have overlapped, that you're getting double passes on top of it. So there's an, there's an uneven amount of pigment that's gotten into the skin, right? If we look at like our skin model there and we see a spot where you've gone over once, you have X amount of pigment in the skin. If you go over it twice, you have twice as much, right? And that's that twice as much is more prone to move compared to the one that has less in it because as the skin thins, it kind of Oreo cookies the pigment that's in there and it forces it to move out, right? So with these hatching, you usually get these, these bald spots or holidays that are gonna be in there where there's not gonna be a lot of pigment like five, 10 years down the road. In comparison to those spaces that are hypersaturated around it, they're gonna bleed out a lot. <clears throat> so the idea is with this, you use these when you're trying to have something that should look a little bit more textured. And I mean, this is like a limited timeline. If somebody's 90 years old, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, <clears throat> you can still have spots where you're gonna see those, those breaks inside of it occur, but this will give something a little bit more texture. So when you see people doing like dot shading work, things like this, and they want it to have a little bit more of an organic feel, they'll use hatching instead of solid filling along the darker spots to keep it looking light because there's gonna be less pigment in the skin, right? Um, the good thing is, is that this is fast at least, uh, in comparison with our next one, which is the, the pendulum. <laughs> so the pendulum works kind of the, the same way as the shovel in the box does in, in so far as you're, you're imparting trauma into the skin, just very lightly to try and aggregate all of the pigment to the very top edges of the dermis, right? And if we remember our handy skin model here. Um, the, the epidermis is like really thin, right? Like it's, it's surprised like 40 micrometers. It's, it's impossibly thin. So you don't have to really work too hard to get your needle to go into the skin. What we do is the pendulum, we're moving our hand back and forth at such a sufficient speed that we're not having to worry too much about our stretch. I mean, we have to have a decent stretch when we're doing it, but the snagging of the needles inside of it will end up creating these little fissures where we're ending up actually pulling the skin against what our natural stretch is. So you see people using the pendulum string uh, on this, they'll, they'll end up pushing the skin one way and then they end up 
kind of shading against it, right? And the needle drag inside of it actually increases the stretch one way while their hand is pushing the other. And what this does is it opens the skin up <clears throat> by using the needle pulling off of the back of the tube to deposit the pigment really shallowly because you end up bunching the skin up on the side where it's being pulled. And that, man, that color sucks. Um, and ends up decreasing the, the depth that you're going to get, right? Because it's almost like take a pillow and squish it, right? It becomes fatter, you know what I mean? So when you're doing this, you're going back and forth a whole bunch and it keeps the pigment relatively located into the top part of that dermis, right? Bad thing is, is when you're doing this, if you do too many passes, which is why I only use it for blending personally, you're going over top of it super fast, trying to build up to get to a solid black, you end up tearing the hell out of the upper part of the skin, the epidermis, right? It becomes so much trauma up there that the body has to work extremely hard to heal that it can take much longer to heal. And as it takes longer to heal because there's so much additional trauma, it requires so much stuff to be pushed up to fill those holes that have been created from that needle tearing and ripping through it. A lot of this pigment that's in there will end up migrating out. So it'll lighten up a lot more, right? Now this doesn't mean that you can't get really solid blacks with it. You can, it's just going to take much longer and uh, usually it's gonna be spanned over a few different sittings because the more you rip the upper layer of the skin, the more you inflame it, the more pigment's gonna be lost during the heal, right? So uh, next one, my shovel one, we had a video on it. I don't remember, it's been a while. <laughs> All you do is you go in and then you go out. <laughs> like you're digging with a shovel. Du, 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 du. And you do everything in a line, right? So you're doing a line with shovel motions, and then you two thirds overlap, and then you do it again. And it's just directional. The shovel can get super duper 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 dark, but it can take a little bit more time. So this, this is why we talk about this one now, right? The box motion. So what do we mean by this? First, we take a box, a rectangular or a square box, just some type of, well, rectangular, yeah, the 3D version. Uh, we'll go 2D. Uh, <laughs> all we're gonna do is we have our starting line, right? Now this, this is gonna get a little technical, but just pay attention. On one side here, we have, we have max pigment, right? What I mean by that is when we start, if we start at this point and we're moving this way, when we start, if we do not pick up our machine, the amount of pigment that we have here and how diluted it is from picking up skin cells and eggs date is nil. It's fresh pigment. So this is 100%, right? So what we do is we're going to be doing almost that box, uh, the shovel motion, as we're going across. And we're going to come up to about halfway through this space where we're going to fully pack on top of this coming up to that space. Right? <clears throat> when we get to the corner over here, because the skin has started to swell and exude, and we've lost some of the pigment along the way, however big that this doesn't have to be this fucking big when you do it, okay? Just scale for what your work is. I mean, it can be this big. When, it's, when you get to this point over here, we've lost some of the pigment that's in here. So we've decreased the amount that's in the tube, and we should be picking up some skin cells that are in it. So we were sitting around, maybe around 80% purity of the pigment at this point in time. Now, what we're gonna do from this point is we're gonna work on a 45 up to the other corner, right? As we're doing this, we're gonna be overlapping any of this additional stuff that we've already done, picking up some of the pigment that we've left behind and mixing it with some of the exudate and stuff that we've got in there. When we get up to this point up here, we're gonna be running about 60, well, we'll say around 40 to 60% purity, right? And then we're gonna finish going across this way. Does that make sense? So now we're starting to get some 80% stuff that's gonna be pushed up towards the top that's been picked up from our corner that we've pulled up here. That's gonna be mixing with a decreasing amount of pure pigment as it goes across, creating an even space where basically everything, except for this one point that you start here in this first block, is gonna be around 85 to 90% pure pigment, maybe? That's not bad math, 70 to 60%, 60 to 70% pure pigment. Um, which is actually really cool because if we're doing these small sections here and we know that the body is going to be ejecting around 20 to 25 percent of the pigment during the heal we're still going to be above a threshold where this stuff should look really really dark right um also doing it this way <clears throat> you have an easy visual guide to know where you left off right 
if I have done this first pass and I redip, I'm resetting this this entire thing. So that doesn't matter. Basically, I'm just doing a shovel, and you end up with a lot of little skip marks and jumps inside of it. Doing something like this, it's easy. You have square, 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 right, straight through, and you can overlap them too if you want to, right? Because like when we go through doing just a straight single pass, trying to get everything done, it, it is possible, but it's extremely time consuming. And sometimes we're just trying to get stuff done efficiently uh, rather than trying to milk the money. You know what I mean? So when we do something like this, you get a triage at the end. If there's little spots or deficiencies inside of it, they're going to be small. So you can just grab a liner going, bop, 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 fill them in, done. And the amount of trauma that the skin has experienced has decreased it, it, just a whole bunch, right? So <clears throat> you can move quickly, you can repair anything that you miss quickly. The skin's decreased in the amount of trauma that it's gotten exposed to. And that means it'll heal better, right? So for solid, solid fills, like if you're doing tribal, this totally works. I would not be doing tribal if I was trying to do a hatch motion or pendulum, which I've seen, I don't do social media like really anymore. I mean, I'm supposed to, but I'll go and post like once every two months or something. Um, I see people doing this and it's just, like, you do a sleeve, it would take like, you know, 900 hours to fill it solid black. A shovel can work, but you're gonna end up usually with more deficiencies that are gonna show more when it heals that you're gonna have to go back and do, so it's almost like double passing. But this one, it's a little bit easier to fix on the fly. Anyways, there you go. First video back, baby. Uh, let me know if you're happy with this. I don't know if I explained it well. I haven't done this in a little while. The brain's still a little foggy from all this stuff, so we'll do that. Um, we are doing uh, hangout sessions while I play Minecraft where I'm gonna be doing uh, like complex builds about different organelles in the skin and uh, viruses and stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> so you can come by, it's every Wednesday, like 8 p.m. Pacific time. You can come in and just hang out, ask questions if you want to. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to put on music that gets me DMCA and we can act silly. Anyways, pass that. Like, subscribe, do all that stupid stuff, and we'll see you in the next video. This is Ryan from Better Tattoo and signing off.